Hey guys, so I know I was supposed to upload on Tuesday, but after Raw on Monday, I was like, I'm gonna wait until two. I'm, I'm gonna wait till Wednesday or Thursday, which is Thursday is today. Um, because after Raw, I was like, I want to find out what happened on SmackDown to see if I can go over anything that happened then for today's video. And then I reminded myself that it's time for NXT last night. So I was like, I'll upload it and th on Thursday and talk about everything that that awesome that happened on Raw and SmackDown and NXT. So there's only like one awesome thing that happened on NXT, um, which we'll get to that after. We're going to go from Raw and then SmackDown and then NXT. So let's just get into it. So we kicked off Monday Night Raw um, with Roman Reigns coming out because everyone knew, if you didn't know then you probably already know now, that Roman Reigns returned to kick off, to kick off Monday Night Raw um, this past Monday. And basically, he said he's in remission, he's getting better, and he is going to be back, and he's now back in action, actually. Um, so, that is awesome, because I freaking love Roman Reigns. If you guys didn't know, he is like one of my favorite wrestlers of all time, so... <sighs> I am very happy that he's back in, in, in remission, so... Uh... And then Ricochet and Aleister Black defeated the Revival. And then during Ronda's match, um, or something, yeah, Ronda's match against, I think, Ruby Riot or something, um, Becky Lynch came out. And obviously, if you guys didn't know already, um, I think at Elimination Chamber, she also came out and attacked Charlotte and Ronda and... Vince and all, and like, the authority, they said that if Becky does something else like that again, she will be arrested, and sure enough, she came out last, this past Monday on Raw, and she is arrested, so, I really don't know what's gonna happen with her, um, after that, and then Finn Balor was on Moment of Bliss with Alexa Bliss, and Leo Rush came out and interrupted a moment of bliss and basically they had a match for the intercontinental championship leo rush versus finn balor for the intercontinental championship um finn obviously won because he's finn balor and leo rush is leo rush right so um and then basically um, a few months after that, the Ascension was confronted by Tucker Knight, a member of Heavy Machinery. Otis was gone somewhere else. I don't know where he was gone, but he came back soon, a little after that. And basically, the Ascension was talking shit about him. Um, basically saying that Otis was fat, which, he's not fat. I don't like that, but he didn't, they didn't actually say F-A-T, word fat, right? So... Um, he, they basically said Otis has a big gut. Okay. And then Otis came back, Tucker told him what the Ascension was saying, and then basically Otis attacked the Ascension after that. And then and Dean Ambrose had a no disqualification match against Drew McIntyre. Drew obviously won with help from Baron Corbin, Elias, and Bobby Lashley. What else is new with him? Um... And then, something else I was definitely not expecting was Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins to come out and save Dean. And then, Snoop Dogg, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and Maria Menounos sent a birthday message to Ric Flair for his 70th birthday. And then, I still can't believe this happened. Um, during Ric Flair's birthday celebration, um... Triple H announced a few people that, a few Hall of Famers that were going to be joining the party. There was Ricky the Gr Dragon, Steamboat, Kurt Angle, Shawn Michaels, and Sting. Which I am obsessed with Sting, actually. And then when he announced for Ric Flair to come out, he didn't, like his music hit, but he was nowhere to be found. And then all of a sudden we go backstage and this guy is 
dragging the cameraman around to, and when it got to Ric Flair's dressing room, the camera basically went up, and it was Batista. And he dragged, he attacked Ric Flair, and dragged him out of his dressing room, and he looked right in the camera and said, Do Hunter, which is Triple H, do I have your attention now? And that's how it ended. So, um, I'm pretty sure that they're setting up a WrestleMania match with, for Batista versus Triple H. Which I hope I get to see this year. Because that would be awesome. Uh... And then after that, Jinder Mahal and the Singh Brothers came out to what was left of the birthday celebration. <laughs> and Jinder literally complained about not being invited. And they just started dancing. Shawn, Fa Shawn Michaels faked being friends with them and faked danced with them. Until he hit Sweet Chin Music on Jinder Mahal and Kurt Angle didn't... I can't remember what the name of it is, but he did one of his finishers and basically dropped Jinder Mahal on the cake. So, <laughs> I loved that moment. I mean, Jinder Mahal is not bad, but I still loved it. Um, and then, oh, by the way, guys, um, a few days before the Hall of Fame ceremony, I'm going to go over who the inductees are. So, I'm not going to tell you who, who's induct who are the inductees yet. Until, like, maybe a day before, um, uh, or maybe the day of the Hall of Fame ceremony, where I think that's where I'll do my, I don't know, I don't know yet, but, <coughs> anyway. Now on to SmackDown. First, Kofi Kingston and Daniel Bryan kicked off SmackDown with the contract signing for Fastlane, Daniel signed his name, and then Kofi went to sign up, but Vince McMahon came out, and this literally boiled my blood. Like, I'm happy this person returned, but I didn't, I, w I wasn't happy with how it happened. Um, Vince pretty much said he's replacing Kofi in the Fastlane WWE Championship match. And then, he literally said to Kofi... We need someone who is more deserving of you. And look, honest to goodness, no one is more deserving than Kofi. Like, he's been wanting this for 11 years. So, I don't even know what's going through Vince McMahon's mind. Like, I freaking love Vince McMahon. But, and I'm very happy Kevin's back, don't get me wrong. But I just don't like that he had to replace Kofi. Like, yeah. Kofi's probably going to get a shot at Mania. But I did really want to see him face Daniel at Fastlane as well. Um, but... Look, as long as Kofi gets his match at Mania for the championship, I'm 1,000% fine with this. But if he doesn't, I'm forever going to be super bitter and salty about it. Because it should be his shot. I mean, Kevin got still got a lot of time, you know? Anyway, that's what happened at the beginning of SmackDown Live. So then Kevin set down a signing contract where Kofi was supposed to sign it. But oh well. Still love Kevin and Kofi and Vince. And then Cesaro was originally supposed to face Johnny Gargano. But Jeff Hardy comes out. And was I was definitely not expecting this. I was just... When Jeff Hardy's music hit, I was like, isn't it supposed to be Johnny Gargano since I was facing? And then Jeff Hardy's music hit, and I'm like, oh, he's facing Jeff Hardy now. And then I looked at the screen, and I'm like, wait, is this Jeff and Johnny Gargano? And then I looked closer, and I found out it was both Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy, and Matt Hardy returned, and they beat Cesaro and Sheamus. And I still can't believe that they're back, like, reunited. And then, triple threat match for the United States title, R-Truth versus Rey Mysterio versus Andrade. R-Truth won, um, and he wanted to make John Cena proud, which I'm pretty sure he did. And then, Kevin wanted to team with Kofi to take on Daniel, Ryan, and Rowan. 
and Kevin pinned Daniel. And which made Kevin Kevin and Kofi win. Okay, so that was what all that happened on SmackDown. Now let's start with NXT. Now not much happened on NXT. Um, you know, they can only fit so much into an hour show. Um but they kicked off NXT with Johnny Gargano doing a promo. Tommaso Ciampa um, interrupted him. And he said, and he was like, Johnny, the Dusty Rose Tag Team Classic is coming back. And I was wondering if we could, like, you know, ta team up one last time, become DIY again, and all this stuff. Then Tommaso reached out his hand to shake Johnny Gargano's hand. Johnny... And Tommaso shook hands, so now they're DIY again, I'm assuming. If not, then they're just an, an, another tag team. I don't know if DIY is, like, officially back together, but I think they are. Um, I don't know. Um, next, Mia Yim versus Shayna Baszler. Uh, oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> There's a bunch of stuff that happened before then. Um... Aaliyah and Vanessa Bourne faced um, Tanara Conti and Xia Lee. Aaliyah and Vanessa Bourne won. Um, and then the Boston Hook Connection, the WWE inaugural Women's Tag Team Champion, Sasha Banks and Bayley, um, returned to NXT to do a promo saying that they're going to face anyone from Raw, SmackDown, and even NXT. So, I was kind of expecting uh, Tegan Knox and... Dakota Kai to come and face them at that moment, but they didn't. But oh well. And then Keith Lee defeated Dominic Dijakovic, and that is all that happened. And also Shayna Baszler defeated Mia Yim. But that match, the Mia versus Shayna match, was amazing. All right, so that is it for today's video. Um, so what a week for WWE. Honest to God, like so much happened. Um, but, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I don't know what I'm going to do for next week yet, but I'll definitely come up with something. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I will see you guys sometime next week for whatever video I'm going to do. <laughs> Bye, guys.